uh, talk about it before I forget. Um, there's these little nuances with dogs and dog training that, like, I, I can't um, impress upon you enough that it may seem insignificant, but it's really important. And, and some things are just sort of like um, difficult for people because we're human, right? We're human and we're dealing with non-humans. It's difficult for people to sort of like get for whatever reason. And uh, separation anxiety in dogs, which comp encompasses about, um, you know, 15% of all dogs or something like that, and 25% of all dogs that are given up, it's real, it's real bad. The owners end up getting, um, like, held hostage. That, that's, that's the way it sort of is. So there's, there's this one sort of, um, to, get the, to get the dog better is difficult for the owner. It's almost impossible. Um, you know, to get the dog to change, and to change, you have to, like, change your behaviors with the dog. Now, one of the main things about these dogs is that when you leave, they flip out. So you have to work on getting the dog, like making sure that the dog, you leave it alone, but the dog also has to see you coming and going. So you sort of segregate the dog, right? So it can't see you, but then on the same hand, you want it to see you coming and going a lot. Um, someone I know is wanting to find random animal bones and parts, and I'm having to tell them not to because of disease and conservation. How it is the... Um, well, uh, m yeah, but most animals that have been dead for a while, like rabies and all that, that doesn't... Like, after the animal's dead, the, it, that doesn't exist anymore. But uh, anyway, so back to separation anxiety. Um, so... So that, that is a key feature of the separation anxiety dog, that they need to be alone. You need to make sure that they're, they're, because they're hardwired to go with the pack, you need to get the dog to stay alone, so it has to be alone, but it also, on the same hand, has to see you coming and going. So, like, you might go into a I was just talking with somebody about this. Like, you, you might... Have the dog segregated in a room, but it has to see you coming into the room and you not interacting with it. Like you just ignore it, you go in and do something, and then you leave again. And if the dog starts flipping out, you gotta run back in. No! So it's you want to get the dog to the point where you're coming, at, you know, like the dog's laying on its side sleeping, it looks up at you. And just goes back to sleep. That's what you want. That's normal behavior. The dog that's jumping up when you come in the room, that is not what you want. Okay? So, does that make sense? So the way that you get the dog better is by making sure that you're coming and going from the room. If you see any shitty behavior... It's no down, and with time, the dog's going to just be like, oh, it's, it's him again, or it's her again. That doesn't mean I'm going out. Okay, so do you understand what I'm saying? So if you just segregate the dog, right, and it's in a room, and the door's closed, and every time you go in there, you're taking the dog out, and you're going to train it, which it likes to do. Every time you go in there, the dog's going to jump up and be wired. So, so you, you have to go in there, but ignore the dog. It's a big problem that what people do is like they only use the crate when they're leaving the house, one. The dog needs to be in the crate and watch you walk around the house and you ignore it. You got your shit going on. The dog should not be getting attention when it's in the crate, right? I hope this makes sense. You get that puppy and you're crate training it. So the crate, thank you, Uniquities. Oh, it's cake day? No shit. So the, 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 the puppy 
sees you just walking around the house, but you're not, it doesn't think it's going out. It's, you know, you're not interacting with it. And many times with the puppy, I'm waking that puppy up. I'm not waiting for the puppy to wake up. I'm waking it up, like if it's eight week old puppy, I'm grabbing the puppy and running it outside. Because if it wakes up, it's like any animal that wakes up, they might have to go to the bathroom. They probably gotta take a leak, especially a puppy. So I'm proactive and I'm getting the dog and I'm running them outside so that there is no excitement created, right? Because even the puppy doesn't want to go to the bathroom in the crate. So the old dog, the puppy, it doesn't matter. Part of crate training is you being home and the dog being in the crate and you're walking around not interacting with the fucking dog. That's what it's about. You want the dog to be chill. You want that dog to, to keep sleeping until you tell it to get up. It's a two-year-old dog. A normal dog behavior is a dog that's in the crate. It's laying down on its side. Might look at you. Uh, I don't really think I'm going to do anything. I'll just stay sleeping. That is when Merlin was here that I knew that Merlin was getting better. I could walk into the room... And Merlin would be like the other dogs. Just look at me. Eh, fuck. I hope that helps. We're really into these, um, the Beatles from Grey Gardens. Fascinating. Just fascinating people. Ah, oh, that's good. Water's delicious. Uh, so I have a dog that unfortunately was left alone for four months and she was ex has extreme anxiety. She's a pit bull and she, sometimes she is left alone. She loses her mind. We follow what you mentioned. The dog that unfortunately was left alone for four months? What do you mean it was left alone for what you mean by that? If it was left alone, it probably wouldn't have separation anxiety. Sure, you didn't give him the separation anxiety? It's overly loving people that do it. That sounds like neglectful people. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was left alone for four months. That really wouldn't give it separation anxiety. Now, I can't see the situation and, you know, but if it has separation anxiety, it's going nuts. You know, I don't know. Are you training it too? Because a dog that comes here with separation anxiety is doing training too. Like, it's an all day event. Okay? I don't know. I don't want to be discouraging or anything. There's certainly, I, I hope you can get, we do. Very complicated thing. She had um, nowhere to stay besides a kennel at my girlfriend's mom's place. That's the only place she could stay at before we got her back. But it's not a problem with somebody taking her out, in and out of the, the kennel, the crate but we treat her very well now and we're doing it. She was at your girlfriend's mom's house and they were using a crate, right? Okay. Did they take the dog outside? I'm not, she was, oh, she was outside, outside in a kennel in a backyard. And then, so uh, now, um, is she, you crate her in the house? Is she, is she, are you crate training her? Is that what you're doing? She had a lot of room, but not a lot of attention. Um, yeah, they don't really need a lot of room. So now how much room does she have? Like, yeah, she is kennel trained. And, and then so when, when, so you leave her alone, she's going, 
She's going ape shit? Like, what do you mean? Like, what's she doing? Is she shitting in her crate and pissing in her crate and barking? What's she doing? Ready to start eating healthier. Meet Kachava. Yes, sir, she is crying a Kachava ton. Kachava is the world's healthiest all-in-one meal shake. Well, how many times a day are you training her? Is she, is she e-collar conditioned? She's crying. She's like, what, whining? Is that what you mean? Crying is... The human act of crying. Is she like whining? She's e-collar conditioned. And uh, how long of how long and what's what is, what is she e-collar conditioned? Like what commands? I mean, see, I don't I don't know what you've done with the dog. I just know when a dog comes here. So it's like um, I'm gonna turn to be flip with you um so the only so she's not trained she's not trained dude She's not trained. No isn't conditioned in properly because of it. Don't, you're not following me. Yeah, we need to train her more. I agree. Well, you know, there's nothing to talk about right now because she's not trained. No isn't conditioned in. And you, you do have an e-collar on her? Did you say that? You do have an e-collar on her? Uniquities. What an awesome dude. Okay, I'm now falling. We do not have an e collar. Yeah, don't. Because e collars are for dogs that have training and it's all conditioned in. You know, you, you say kennel and the dog will go in the kennel. Man, that's not. You know. I don't have a magic wand, you know. You know, uh, if, if a dog, so what is some good training advice we could do for her? What? Dude, some good training advice. I said she needs to be trained. Didn't you hear me? This is a bullshit story. You don't even have a dog, do you? Some good training advice? Train her! Do you really have a dog? Train her! Sit down while here, heel kennel, the weave poles. Your dog has separation anxiety. You haven't done anything. I ask you, like you're saying you train, she's not trained. She's not. Your dog is stupid because you've made her stupid. She doesn't even understand no. You probably scream at her. If no's not conditioned properly, and you do that by training, right? So the dog isn't sitting, you get a refusal, you say no with a correction and tie it in. The dog starts picking up on no, means I'm doing something wrong. I'm in the wrong position, okay? No candles don't help with separation anxiety. What is the matter with you? What does it matter with you? Oh, a chamomile candle? Grow up. You, 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 everything but like training, right? Training helps your dog with separation anxiety, okay? All right? Training. Candles don't help, okay? I walk my dog to tire her out. Cuddle for 30 minutes. But... 
Yeah, don't do, yeah. Here, uh, what's your name? Grayson Evans? Don't do any of that, okay? You, you, don't, you don't cuddle or coddle the dog, all right? One, you're, you're foolish. If this sounds like bullshit. You couldn't be this stupid and have a dog, okay? Spend extra time soothing before the house trips. You're making the do You don't even say goodbye to the dog with separation anxiety. You say goodbye to your dog like this, you give the dog separation anxiety. You gave your dog separation anxiety. There's nothing I can do for you. You sound helpless. You sound, you just sound helpless. I, you sound moronic, you know, cuddles. It's gotta be bullshit. Nobody would come here and say that, that these people have, this has gotta be one person just trolling. They just wanna hear me talk or something. You sound, you sound moronic. You cuddle the dog. Yeah, I know, I agree. A lot of idiots. There's always idiots, though. Toxic, you know that. Just moronic behavior. Like, you know, separation anxiety encompasses a lot of dogs, and people have got to, like, waste people's time. You know, you can't, you can't train the dog. Uh, you want to use a chamomile candle or something. You know, that's not going to do it. You got to, you don't want to train the dog. No. So, dog standing up in its crate panting. You say no, down, and teach the dog down. Well, how's the raven doing? He has a name. If you don't know his name, don't worry about it. How's the raven doing? How's your mother doing? I mean, seriously, how is your mommy? What did she make you for dinner? Yeah, Sam. So next time use his name. What treat should I give my dog? None, you moron. What treat should I give my dog? This is all just bullshit. Nobody could be coming to this channel and be asking this que these questions back to back. Right, Toxic? That's just troll activity. What treat should I give my dog? Seems cool. Um, yeah, anyway. All right. So I just want to talk about that separation anxiety thing. Let me recap this one more time. Just get rid of these idiots as they come. For your separation anxiety, dog, to get better, it needs to be left alone, right? but it really is important that it sees you coming and going. And if the dog shows excitement, right, you don't wanna let it out of the crate. You wanna teach it to be calm, right? And if you start seeing the dog, you're coming and going from the room and it's ignoring you and stays, you know, might lift its head and look at you, but stay asleep. That's what you want, all right? So you want to segregate it, but you want to make sure that the dog sees you coming and going. So like Merlin, when he was here, I move them around. I move dogs around um, because each time you move them, it'll cause the separation anxiety to, to sort of come back. Um, so I'll move them around sometimes, but basically I want, to, want them to see me coming in one door, right? Or go, going in a door, coming back, going in another door, coming and going. You know, that's it. You segregate them so they can't see you all the time. You teach the dog that it needs to be alone at times. They're hardwired to go with a pack. But you have to be coming and going and making sure that the dog, you know, really change it up so the dog has no idea what's going on. It just gets used to you coming and going and it's not stressed out, okay? That's key. It's that point when you're leaving that the dog flips out. You did it to the dog. It's always the overly loving owner that does this. You know, you gotta say goodbye to the dog. Don't say goodbye to the dog. Don't say a word. 
Or be a dick. It's better to be a dick or not say anything. Ignore the dog before you come and go, okay? So, um, you know, be, be, vid, you know, be vigilant. Make sure that uh, your dog gets better and you pr find somebody that can help you that's qualified. Good luck with that. People will tell you that they can help your dog and they can't. People can't, people call themselves dog trainers that don't even train dogs. People call themselves dog trainers that use head collars on dogs. You could just, you know, do that yourself. It's ridiculous. If you're working with a dog trainer that can't train a dog to heal, and puts a head collar on your dog, why are you giving them any money? I mean, seriously, why are you giving them money? Anyway, I gotta go. Hey, I'm, we're, I'm, we're watching this thing. We're gonna watch this thing about the, the, the Beals. Um, what is it, Grey Gardens? But now we're watching another one. We're watching, um, it's a different one that has the other Bouvier sister in it. You know, should I tell my dog no as a correction before I leave the house? Yeah, sure. Yeah, be a dick. No, S go out the door. Yes, yes, you should, Toxic. Yes, that's right. With your dog that you had problems with? No, right? Fucking leave. That's it, that's it. It's with the separation anxiety dog, it's better to be a dick. Because you know, right, when, when you're leaving, there, there's going to be that excitement. Say no. If your dog doesn't have separation anxiety, just ignore it, okay? If it's, if it's cool and it's laying down and stuff and you can sneak out, do it. But once it has separation anxiety, you got to fucking, like, get that dog's head back so that it wants to chill out before you leave. Someone told me today a dog that has been domesticated changes... Uh, told me a dog that's been domesticated changes the body. What? I don't even know what you're saying. Someone told me today a dog that's been domesticated changes the body. Evie was screaming over the storm last night. I stayed up and corrected her every time. I heard her whine. H um, doesn't mean to stop training. No. And remember, if she's in a crate... Let's say you're sleeping or something. She starts whining. Like, just take your shoe, lob it up in the air so it falls on top of the crate. That might help because it creates a pressure wave around it. You know, you can throw a shoe at the crate, okay? Make that sound, and then you can also say no along with it. But you got to get them to shut up, you know? That thunder and whatever, whatever's freaking out your dog. A domestic dog body is different than a wild dog. Well, they look, you know, you're talking about a wolf. Like the different, listen, it's a difference between a pug and a wolf are vastly different. The difference between a pug and a Great Dane are vastly different, okay? But they're genetically the same. So you can breed a wolf with a big German Shepherd, you know? That's what somebody told me, the internals change. What? I, you know, we bred all, we, we bred all these dogs are subspecies of the wolf, right? They're all bred from the wolf. We changed them, yes. They're different, but they're the same. You can breed them. What do you mean they're different? They're not different. You, you think that if you say, say, let's say hypothetically, you had a wolf that was the same size as like a domestic dog and you, you skinned them or you, you remove the head, right? This is, you know, science experiment. You were just 
checking out the torso, the insides, right? There's some, some of the dogs are built like wolves. So you think that what, what, what would be different? I, I don't know what, you, you know, domestic dogs, we've bred them to be a certain way, but they're all sort of the same. You look at the studies in Austria with the wolves, man, they can do the same thing that domestic dogs can do. So I don't know what they were telling you, but they all seem pretty much the same to me. I don't know, I wouldn't believe everything you hear. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty much the same, aren't they? You can breed a dog and a wolf. They're not that much different. One, one's domesticated and one isn't. So domestication doesn't have to happen over 10,000 years. Domestication happens over time, but that could be just two generations of animals. Domestication is about selective breeding. That's it. You pick this animal and you want to breed it with this animal. Like this is a calm animal. This is a calm animal. I'm going to breed them and then hopefully the offspring will be calm. But this uh, domestic dogs, there's a lot of like, this dog looks this way. This dog looks this, this way. I'm going to breed them. It's not about like, this temperament is great. It's a real calm dog. This temperament is great. It's a real calm dog. I'm going to breed them. Because if we did that and stopped worrying about the way the dogs looked, it would be less of a problem. And if you're talking about domestic dogs being physiologically different than, yeah, look at the pug. That's not a positive thing. Pugs are unhealthy or the bulldog or any other dogs that like where there's a dwarf gene, like a, um, a basset hound. Like we're, we're breeding a dog with a dwarf gene? What the fuck is that? That's not, gonna, that's not gonna make a healthy dog. Or I'll tell you something that's even worse. So these, these little pit bulls that people are breeding, whatever they're called, like, you're a fucking asshole. You wanna breed an unhealthy dog. What, what is that? Do, you know what I'm talking about? The little micro pits or whatever? Fucking assholes. I'll tell you what's also stupid is the fucking Labradoodle, the Golden Doodle, every damn doodle, and I got no problem with doodles, and I've trained a lot of them, but who started this shit? Do we really need another breed? Really? Isn't there, don't we have enough? And we have so many breeds that are unhealthy, like what the fuck? Like, okay, okay. so, all right, you wanna make the Labradoodle? Okay, now we're gonna make the Golden Doodle? Now we're gonna make the Australian Shepherd Doodle? Are you fucking kidding me? And people want to buy these dogs. Like, why are you supporting this shit? Why are you supporting this shit? You want a pedigree dog. There's already one. It's, you know, why don't you go get, you want a, a Labradoodle? Why don't you go buy a Poodle or a Labrador? What's your problem? Are you, you want something that's like a Labrador and a Poodle? Get a Chesapeake Bay. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I'm sorry, I don't get it. What's your, what, what's your point? It's, it's ridiculous. We, we, we've screwed up so many breeds. Look at the German Shepherd, man. German Shepherds, like the ones with the real sloping back. Are you kidding me? You think that's healthy for that dog? No fucking way. There's big dogs we've screwed up too. I would never, I don't want a shepherd for sure, but I wouldn't own one with a sloping back. But we see them all the time. That's some kind of fucking germ, German shepherd or something like, I don't know what that's about. You want a dog, if you want a healthy dog, it should sort of have the same frame as like a wolf. Do you know what I'm saying? It could be a little bit different, but you know, like a Labrador is bigger boned and has some, it's stockier and everything, but it's just sort of still looks like a dog. It's got a snout. You want a bulldog, like a, an English bulldog? My dad loved them, but why? Why? I, I, you know, because of the way that it looks? 
Don't you, wouldn't you rather have a dog that could like breathe well and could run well? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't get it. There's a, there's a lot of dogs I just, um, I just don't get. It's just like, I have no problem with pugs, by the way. I think they're adorable. If there was a pug out there on the street, I'd grab the damn pug of being here. I don't really care. I'm just saying, like, human beings, like, you know, don't we have enough? Don't we have enough? I mean, there's people breeding dogs in, in backyards. It's fucking ridiculous. They know nothing about breeding. I was talking to somebody earlier. His girlfriend or wife or whatever talked him into, they went to go get a puppy, talked him into getting two puppies at the same time from the same litter. Well, you're stupid, right? That's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Neither dog's going to get trained. They're supposed to be split up in the eighth week. You know, those dogs are going to be horrible. Going to be horrible. And the person that bred the dogs clearly didn't care. Knew that the dogs wouldn't get trained, but here you go. Just give me the money. It's fucked up. You know, I mean, we could talk about there's a lot of Amish people breeding dogs. Those a lot of puppy mills or Amish people. That's why a lot of states that have like Florida, a lot of Amish, Missouri, Ohio, you know, Pennsylvania. It's a lot of puppy mill states. OK, that's just a fact. That's a bad thing too, because they're in this, they're just, they don't care. If you want to buy a dog, or you want to buy a purebred dog, look for somebody that's gonna, like, that is a vet. If you can find a breeder that's a vet of the breed that you want, do that. Or you want the standard of the breed. So I have no problem with buying a breed. I'll do it, no problem. But I also own, dogs that are mutts and are homeless, you know, you know, I, I adopted them, but you, you, you look for a dog. Here's a, here's a good way to get a dog. Hey, you look and see who was at Westminster. Okay. Like say you want, um, in the working dog class, you see who was, uh, or non-sporting. And you see, uh, well, what poodle was there or who won? And then you find out who's breeding that dog and then you get a dog from them or somewhere in that lineage somewhere, okay? That's what you do. That's a good start because if they're at Westminster, Westminster and show dogs like that, it's all about the way that they look, but it's also about the temperament too. So they have to meet all the criteria. If you really want the breed and you want a healthy one, that's also a concern with Westminster dogs too. Like that are like, say you want a Labrador, that is not a guarantee that you're not gonna get a dog that's not gonna have health problems, okay? You, wanna, you also wanna get a dog that like if there's a, uh, it's like a breed that has genetic problems like there's like known things like maybe you want the labrador's eyes uh you know or their hips you know there's there's certain things that you can have done um with testing the the, the breeder will have both the male and the female tested right and then you can sort of say there's odds are that the probably the dog isn't going to have that problem all right so you're going to want to pay some money is what i'm saying you want to pay some money, but with that said, you could also get a mutt from the shelter that'll be an awesome dog. It's a crapshoot. The only thing of it is, if you get the mutt, you sort of really don't know what the temperament is. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you have a dog with a real mellow temperament that looks a certain way, and you have another dog with a real mellow temperament that looks a certain way, and you breed them together, you're probably gonna have a mellow dog that has a certain temperament, all right? That's how it works. That is domestic. Remember that, that like domestication, the only criteria is that it happens over time. That could be one generation. It's not like 10,000 years or 100 years. 
it, it's just about selectively breeding two animals, putting them together, and there you go. That's it. Taming an animal is totally different. You could have a domestic animal that was like a handful, and you might have to tame it because it was like sort of feral. But the, it, with a, if you're talking about a dog, they're all so trainable, right? So it would become tameable, right? Like a wild animal could be tamed and trained, but the, if it's born in the wild, that's a wild animal. It's not a domesticated animal. You could take two wild animals if you wanted to, and they seem like they would be like, this is calm, this is calm, and breed them together. That's domestication. That's it. That's all it has to do with. Anyway. All right. I'm going to go. We're going we're gonna to watch more of this. Thank you for teaching me how to train your dog. Oh, service dog Lulu. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, you got a Yorkie. I don't, I didn't teach you. I didn't train your dog. So the only people that I really teach are, I mean, I do videos and everything. Maybe you can pick some shit up, but like, you know, you got to really work with the individual and the dog to like, but I appreciate that you get something out of the videos. I do. I do. I really do. Thanks. Anyway, I'll see y'all. Bye. It's nice to see y'all. Thanks, Uniquities. Thanks, guys. My dad might have to stay longer. Is she doing all, is she doing all right? Toxic? Is she doing all right? Oh, man. How old is she? Possible hospice. That sucks. How old is she, Toxic? Uh, 84 is pretty old. You're not going to go. You're not going to go, right? It's really, what can you do? You know, don't feel bad about it. So my dad always says, said, you don't need to go, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got shit to do. You got to worry about the dogs. Toxic, go watch, uh, go watch, uh, Grey Gardens. I can't go. It's a lot of money. We can't travel because we just moved. There you go. Yeah, you need to work with the dogs. Go watch, uh, Grey Gardens. And tell me that one of those broads isn't a lot like Sarah. You know who I'm talking about? Sarah? You know who I'm talking about. You tell me. Tell me which one is more like Sarah. All right? One of them is... Jackie O is like, really? It's like the pigeon lady? I'm sure she'd, she'd probably like to hear that. But I think it's more like her cousins or whoever they are. Toxic will know what I'm talking about. Is it on Netflix? Um, you can get it on Amazon. It's a documentary from 1975. But there's other sort of documentaries after because the people were just so fascinating. We gotta go. 